Hi, welcome to the series Learn Excel in 24 hours. In this video, we'll understand how to use the NPV and IRR functions. Let's look at the problem that has been given to you. It says for a particular contract, you have to pay 1 million rupees or 10 lakh rupees upfront. You receive 150,000 or 1 lakh 50,000 rupees per year for 10 years. At the end of 10 years, you get another 350,000 as residual value. Calculate the NPV and they've given certain interest rates at 6%, 8%, 10%, so on and so forth and the IRR. So let's see how we solve this problem in Excel. First, we put in the data headers. We start with year zero when the project has to start and then go down all the way from year one through to year 10. For the down payment, because the payment is a payout that we make upfront, we put the 350,000 down payment with the minus sign in cell D4. Then throughout cells D15 through to D13, that is year 1 to year 9, we know that the income is going to be 150,000. And then in the end, in year 10, we are going to receive the 150,000 as usual plus the 350,000 for residual value. So we plug in the value in D14 as 500,000. To calculate NPV or net present value and the IRR or the internal rate of return, life is very easy. The function is straight away NPV and IRR. For NPV, the first input parameter is the interest rate. Now we know in case 1 we are supposed to use 6% so we just plug in 6% and then the series of cash flows is the series of cash flows from cells D4 to D14 and straight away we get the net present value of that particular project at 6% and for IRR we just say equal to IRR and select the data range D to D14 and it tells us what the IRR is all about but if you look at the problem we also have to calculate the NPV for other different interest rates so what we'll do is we'll insert one row and put in data headers in D16 as 6% in E16 as 8% in F16 as 10% so on and so forth we know that as far as NPV function is concerned, the first input parameter is going to be the interest rate and the second input parameter is going to be the series of cash flow. We can see in this problem, the interest rate will keep on changing, but the series of cash flows is always going to be the selection from D4 to D14. So what we do is we select D4 to D14, hit the button F4 so that we freeze the particular selection with the dollar sign. We had done some examples before where we used to remove the dollar sign because it makes the reference static. But in this case, we want the reference to be static and therefore we need the dollar signs. So either one can put in the dollar sign manually before and after the D or you can just select the range and press the button F4 and Excel automatically prefixes and suffixes the dollar sign and we say that the interest rate should be taken from D16 or E16 so on and so forth so we just copy paste the formula across all the way from D17 to H17 and we can see at different rates of interest the NPV will either be positive or negative the negative values of NPV or net present value implies that the interest rate in the market is so good that rather than investing the money in this project, it's better to invest the money in the market. Internal rate of return will always be constant because internal rate of return is a function of series of cash flows. So as long as series of cash flows are going to be the same, IRR will always be a constant value. So I would encourage you 
to play with some permutations and combinations of different cash flows in different series and you can see how the IRR and NPVs will change. The fundamental principle in finance you have to remember is as long as NPV is positive, the project is worth doing and as long as IRR is negative, it is not worth taking the project and in terms of function, the functions are the same as the abbreviations. For net present value, the function is NPV. For internal rate of return, the function is IRR. In NPV, there are two input parameters. The first parameter is the interest rate and the next parameter is the series of cash flows. For IRR, there is just one input parameter and that is the series of cash flows. Thank you.